Impressive um, electronic music control mechanism, um, and they came together and then created a very thin standard on top of MIDI 1.0, just so that we could agree about how do we talk together. And and that is why I have here another device called Linstrument. That is why I can use Linstrument and control Animog and get the same thing. So as I press on a key on Linstrument, you can see it also that bar going up. So that's the core of Animo is the expressive nature, the nature that you can, for each touch, explore at least two dimensions of sound. Um, if you have a touch-based device, it's going to be two. If you have an other controller that supports more, it can be more, it can be three. Um, so this keyboard is a keyboard that we came up with with the original Animog. Um, one of the things it does is that it, it's got quite a few octaves, so you can slide it up and down, but you can also change dynamically the spacing between your keys. So let me use the mouse so that you can see where I'm clicking. Um, so you can sp change the spacing between the keys, and then as you slide from one note to the other, you can change the pitch correction. And let me now like turn it all the way off. And then will be a full continuous slide. So as you dial in the pitch correction that you want, you can have less or more quantization uh, around, around the pitch that you're touching. Um, independent of that, you can also decide which are the notes that you want to play with. So you can click on the scale, and we have a number of built-in scales. Um, let's say we have a minor blue scale, and then the keys switch around, and you can change what the root note is. Based on that, the keys will switch around also. Um, now, if you want to dial in your own scale, you say, okay, I only want these notes, you can do that too. Um, and if you just happen to, to select a scale that is one that Animo knows, then it will automatically figure it out and select it in the drop-down menu also. This is a nice way to explore sound and harmonies by, by staying in like a harmonic context that you know, without having to like, think about, is my note going to sound good? Is my pitch going to sound in tune? Um, you can just sort of explore what, uh, what you want to perform with. Um, this is something we added as a request from Susan Chiani. So Susan, Susan, Susan is a very big animal user, um, but she plays a lot with modular synthesizers and other musicians. And often things aren't really exactly tuned to 440 hertz, so this allows you to change the bass tuning and to tune to other systems. Um, cool. So the new version of Animog has 16 voice polyphony, the old one had four, and then you also had a uh, monophonic mode. Okay, let me reset that patch. So if you look at the toolbar, um, you have these different sections. This is pretty typical in, in synthesizers and apps. Um, this first section called Orbs, this is a section that is geared towards performance. So as Animog, as a voice in Animog triggers, you have an orb that is orbiting in three dimensions over a three-dimensional wave grid, which are basically two wave tables that are 90 degrees flipped. And based on the trajectory of this orb in space, your sound will change. And that is by interpolating between all those wave tables. Um, there's another performance aspect to this. So I'm playing a note with one finger, but I, if, if you see that line in the middle here, where the orb is transiting in this area, I can move that around too. And you can basically, with another finger, start exploring other areas of the wave grid. Um, this, sound, this sound basically has not much set up in other areas, apparently. Um, 
can hear it a little bit. So these are two performance aspects of Animoke. Let me see if I can find another sound that might be. So you can see as, as I move around, it changes the timbre characteristics of the sound a little bit. It's basically interpolating between different wave tables. You can then decide, so I have this path that is drawn between these two dots. You can decide what the speed is that the orbs will navigate that path and which circular orbit they will take while navigating that path. So there's, there's a lot to explore here. Spin it around if you just want to <laughs> let it rotate. So I like to think about this first panel, the ORS panel, as the performance panel. This is the area where you can do all the performance-related interactions with the synthesizer. Um, and that is also the part that is free. So Animog is a free app to download. You can use all the presets. You can import all the presets from the old Animog version. And there's about 8,000 community presets that will just import and port over. And you can use it in the performance page here and get all the benefits of the new version of Animog. Now, it's not really visible here because I'm running the synth full screen, but one of the main improvements that we did was that we developed this new version of Animog as a plugin also. So you don't only have to use it as a standalone synthesizer, you can use it as an audio unit inside DAWs, and we made a Mac version with some wrappers so that you can use it as a VST and an audio, an old, and also audio unit V2 um, with DAWs that would only support that. Um, which was not possible back in the day due to what iOS supports, but now we're able to create full-fledged productions with plugins on iOS. Um, so having, having Animog available as an AU is, is a pretty big deal. Um, so if you're here, obviously are, but I see there's some videos uh, being recorded. There is a little QR code that is hanging below the speaker there. If you download Animoq Z and then point your mobile device to that QR code, you basically get a free unlock of the full version with all the preset packs. Um, this will be stored on the device you unlock it at. So if you want to do it on your iPad at home, take a picture of it and do it on your iPad in the next three days. This code will expire in three days. Um, so th th this will allow you to explore all the other pages um, and, and get full access to the functionality of the synth. So one of the features you can do then is we have this path here that the orbs will, will, will travel through. You can start editing that path and you can draw in different points and basically make it any shape you want to direct the flow of the orb through the wave grid. Okay. So anyone have any questions about this so far? Cool. So, yeah. So with the AU instance, that means you can have multiple instances of it? Yes. In something like AUM or something mm -hmm. like that? Yeah, actually, it's a good. That, that's a good segue. Maybe I'll just show that now. Um, so iOS. This is this is one of my favorite hosts on iOS. Um, for people that are not used to iOS and are mostly using um, PCs or Macs, there's been a trend in iOS that is not DAW oriented. So you're not sort of working from a production standpoint, but more like, okay, I want to host a plugin inside an environment, a little bit like Max MSP, but way easier to access, way easier to interact with. So I have this session here um, that I recorded a while ago. We basically have 
just like in the DAW, four plugins of Animoq Z, and then I have recorded this. So this is, these are four, four instances of Animoq Z running as an AUV3 inside AUM. But this also works in Logic Pro, GarageBand on your Mac, um, and Reaper, Cubase, Bitwig with the VST wrapper. Um, so let's go back to the standalone app because we have more space. It's sort of easier for me to navigate. Um, and I'm going to reload the sound. So the top-down view that we see here, like I was like moving around this wave grid, um, the top-down view is the, the view that the original Animog had. And what you can see here, it's an, it's an easy way to understand the next page, like the Tambras page. What you see here is eight rows of 16 columns, right? Each row is basically a wavetable. Um, it's called a Tambra in Animog. And you can see in the Tambras panel eight different wavetables that have been loaded. And then this, these wavetables are then being traversed in 16 positions. So each wavetable basically has 16 waveforms. They're supposed to be aligned on the different boundaries. And then Animo mixes the position of the orb by interpolating between the waveforms of all the wavetables. I hear from a lot of users, like, I can't get that exact sound from the wavetable that I've created. That is because Animoke always interpolates. It always interpolates between the four wave uh, squares or rectangles um, that the orb is located at. So let, let me now, um, I'll, I'll redu remove the ray here. And you have the, this orb, let me actually clear it out, and then we get no path anymore. So I have only one orb here that is not moving, right? As I move this around, and, oh, sorry, I'm start edit mode. As I move this around, I basically move along the wave tables that are loaded. But imagine that the location that I'm here, it's going to use all those four waveforms and mix between them based on the proximity to each waveform. So it is, it's not intended to be a very precise analytical wavetable synthesizer where you can like exactly sculpt the waveforms that you want to perform with. It is more intended to be exploratory and to get sounds that inspire you and then find motions that you, that, that you also get inspired by. Inspired by. Um, but the original Animo didn't really allow you to easily change those wave tables. So we, we created a whole number of them that are great sounding and great to perform with, but it was quite difficult to create new wave tables. So this is a major new feature of Animo Z, where you can go into a full-fledged wave, ta wave table editor. When that is activated and loaded up, any sound you play on the keys will only use this one wavetable. Um, so I can take an existing timbre, import it in here, and now I can start moving it around. And you can see I'm in this position here, so only this area will actually generate sound. Sure, if I move out of it, I have no sound. But this allows you to sort of craft a series of waveforms in your wavetable. Imagine I tap here and then I take another one, I don't know, this one. It's going to fill it up and you can sort of, it snaps to different boundaries and it allows you to compose a more comp complex wavetable with the elements that you would want and sort of focus on the animation, sound animation and timbre characteristics that you would want to create in your sound. I can tell where you are contextually from here. So you have 16 columns here. Oh. These are the same 16 columns that are here. Okay. Right. 
there are eight rows here, but those are just those are not related to the different timbres. They're basically um, so that you can see the waveform amplitude and sort of evaluate that. But well, what level above, like in the 3D space, like how? That's a really good question. Um, so currently, I'm only focusing on the top-down view, okay. right? Um, and you can see that my orb is at the bottom here. So we thought about this a long time, and we totally are able to support two full sets of eight timbres. But that's a lot to set up, and that's a lot of things to control. Eight, eight times 16 is already a lot of waveforms. So what we decided for Animal Z is basically imagine you have a laptop and you open it up and the Z axis is a duplicate of your wave, uh, your wave tables going upwards. So towards the back and the bottom, that's almost as if it's the hinge and then the wave tables are duplicated in the Z direction and it gives you another way to interpolate between the existing sounds you have and also allows any of the existing animal presets that already are available to come in and to be explored in that third dimension uh, and, get, and get that additional motion in there. Um, so it's like a very quick overview of uh, the timbre editor, you can change gain, um, you can you, you you can sort of